All right, how does this work? Let me try to fix it. Okay, there, fixed. Have you tried turning it off and on? The old classic. I'm Jessa Jones. I'm here from Rochester, New York. I flew here just to come and talk to you guys today. I was a stay-at-home mom, and then I started fixing broken Apple devices primarily and other devices as well. I've now trained seven other stay-at-home moms and one stay-at-home dad to also fix these devices. We fixed over 30,000 devices. Less than 5% would have been considered repairable by authorized repair. So I wrote down some things so that I don't waste my time here. Um, recently, I became Apple certified. So I am Apple certified. You can see it right here. Now, this is largely meaningless. In fact, it tells you right on the back of the letter, what can you do? It says benefits of being Apple certified technician. Apple certification website. This site gives you online access to your certificate. And that's it. And that's pretty much true because there really isn't, like you've heard from these guys, bona fide practical options for authorized repair, at least not for Apple devices and Samsung devices like I'm familiar with. So that leaves this, this uh, gap here where if you, say, have an iPad, crack a screen, there is no authorized repair whatsoever for anything that you can do to break your iPad, period. No service whatsoever. Uh, what if you, like these guys, lose your, you know, drop a phone in the toilet, now you've lost your memories, there's no authorized repair for data recovery. Um, and then even things like a really classic problem, iPhone 7 epidemic failure of audio I see. Apple will, if you go there, they will tell you that it is a made up thing they've never heard of before, even though we know that their internal in-house support ranks that as the number one problem that they're hearing calls about. So we have this long history of being misled by, uh, by manufacturers. And what I wanted to, to talk to you, one thing I'm kind of afraid about is that the new independent repair parts provider program from Apple is sort of this hand-waving, yeah, so you now we're doing right to repair, so it will go away unnecessary. That is not good enough. In fact, that repair, that program is, is quite anti-repair. So for example, iPhone 6S. If I want to go buy an iPhone 6S, it's going to cost me about 200 bucks if I get it used on Swappa.com, which is a pretty good place to get phones. If I want, if I drop that phone and I crack the screen, then the Apple certified price for that screen is 160 bucks, and the Apple certified repair price is 169 bucks. So the independent repair provider program is economically not feasible, and so it's going to be just like authorized repair, which is we don't really fix anything, we tell you everything's not repairable, and we want you to go buy a new phone. Now that sets the stage, though, for what I'm really afraid of, which is the same stuff that these guys have mentioned to you earlier today, software locks. It is true, when I heard Robin uh, say, you, these guys could make it so that you can't plug in a power button, it's you know, coded to the device. We're seeing precedent for that. Right now, as we sit here today, iOS 13 was released, and it now, if you switch the battery, will tell you uh, this battery was put here by Apple, and it will take away function. It will take away your battery health information. If you change your screen, you'll lose true tone. You'll lose ambient light sensor function. If you lose your home button, you could lose your whole device because you can't press home to update, and there goes your data. So we're seeing precedent for this software lockdown. You asked, what could I do differently if this bill was passed? And for me, assuming it trickles over to New York, which I think it would, I would be able to fix more stuff. My Korig, my Roomba, you know, things that I would like to fix is, you know, I would teach kids to fix. I've trained uh, 500 people to learn how to micro solder. I love fixing, people love repair, and practical repair is such a great thing that, that users don't have an option to do practical repair from authorized sources. So we need bills like this. We need your support to help enable users to have the choice to roll back their software to a version that their device still supports. You know, if you keep updating your phone, you're gonna get a hardware software mismatch, and then it doesn't work anymore. Well, how about, how about this? Let's just, can I say, I understand there's a security risk. Give me the ability to consent. I understand I might blow myself up, fine. I understand that I would, may have a security risk if I want to go back and make my phone work again on the old operating system. We can't do those things. And, and I think those, the software locks are what I'm really afraid of because we're seeing more and more and more of them coming out. That's all. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you for your testimony. Any questions? There being none, thank you for your time and taking the time to come down. You're welcome. Uh, Representative Rogers is here.
I didn't know you were so popular. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.